Am I wrong for banning my dad from bringing my mom to my wedding? So I, 24 male, am getting married this summer to my beautiful fiance Holly, 25 female. I am an only child. My mom, dad, and I always felt like we had a very good relationship from the outside. But when I was 14, my mom cheated on my dad with a family friend. It absolutely broke my dad, and my mom became almost unrecognizable afterwards. She was a great mom and always felt like she was affectionate with my dad. But she became cold right after everything came out. My parents tried counseling, but my dad couldn't look at her. The divorce was horrible. My mom went after my dad so hard, tried to get majority custody, tried to financially screw him over too, and to top everything off, she kept dating the family friend. I told her from day one that I wouldn't be dealing with her anymore if she kept dating that guy. So at around 15, I started living with my dad full time. He was still in a vulnerable spot, but together we started working out and doing things to keep him busy. It took years, but my dad got back to his old self. I spoke to my mom occasionally, even though she lived a couple of blocks away. She would call all the time trying to meet up, but I basically told her to F off and to start a new family because I had no interest in being around someone like her. Well, nine months ago, Holly and I got engaged. My dad asked if I plan on letting my mom know. I told him I didn't and I wouldn't be inviting her to the wedding. Well, I guess he took it upon himself to call my mom and inform her. And then they started talking. Three months ago, I show up to my dad's and him and my mom are there. They sit me down and tell me that they've been dating. I called him dumb, pathetic, and reminded him of all the things my mom did to him. How she's probably only back because she's out of money and places to go. My mom tried to intervene and I told her to shut the F up. I told my dad that he can do whatever he wants, but I'm not going to sit by and support it. And we worked together to get him back, so I felt like he wasn't valuing himself or me. My mom has been trying to get an invite to the wedding, but I told my dad it's simple. Your invite is a solo invite with my mom. A plus one if you bring any other human being. My dad is distraught, according to relatives, because he feels like he has to choose between his only kid and his wife. I told my dad that it was going to be like this from now on. Any holiday would be a solo invite. I wouldn't be bringing any grandkids around his house if my mom was there. So he needed to think carefully. My mom's side of the family has started trashing me. I told them if they couldn't understand my position, then they better not show up either. So I uninvited all the relatives that were giving me shit on my mom's side. My fiance is totally understanding, but we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. So am I the asshole? I'm 38 female, I'm in a weird situation with my boyfriend, 40 male, and his friend, 40 female. My boyfriend has had a very, very hard year. A few months ago, his mom got very sick. One night after work, he went out drinking with a couple of guys from work. We lived together and we're in the process of packing up. Well, I was, because we were moving to a new place the following week. I was packing until close to midnight when he texted me. He said he had drank too much and just couldn't deal with getting an Uber and asked if I would pick him up 45 minutes away. Of course, I said yes. When I got to the bar, I texted him and he said he'd be out in a minute. Some girl came out and came over to the car and introduced herself to me. She said she was his very good friend. I knew her name because she'd gone to high school with him years ago, but I didn't even know that they were still in contact. And thanked me profusely for coming to pick him up because he wasn't in any shape to take an Uber. That seemed a bit odd to me because of course I'd pick him up, he's my partner. Anyway, we chatted for a minute and I apologized for my appearance, basically sweaty from packing all evening. I told her that I'd been packing for hours. She asked me if I was moving and I told her yes, we were moving to a new place next week. She seemed slightly confused, but she'd also been drinking, so I ignored that. It almost felt like she thought I was just his buddy that was kind enough to come pick him up. Meanwhile, I'm his partner. Fast forward to his mom's funeral a few weeks later. She was there and she came up to me and apologized for not being available to help him more to plan the funeral and to be his support. I told her that it was okay, no problem, but I was also thinking, huh? We didn't really need any help or support, but whatever, I thought she was just trying to be nice. A few weeks later, I noticed on Facebook that I could see him responding to someone in a thread, but I couldn't see who he was talking to. I asked him and he said that he was talking to her. I couldn't see her replies because she had blocked me. I use social media extensively for work and I know how it works, obviously. I told him that she blocked me, he texted her and asked her if she had, and she lied. As soon as he asked her, she unblocked me. I told him that it was very strange and he said, nah, it's obviously some glitch. Okay, whatever. Then a week later, I noticed the same thing and realized that she blocked me again. I honestly have no clue what to think about all this. It all seems very, very odd. She also mailed him a copy of an old high school yearbook. I asked him why and he said he wasn't sure, but I do realize he had to have given her his address. But also, he never even mentioned her to me previously, but meanwhile, he'd been out drinking with her. And there were guys from work there as well. Does this seem strange to anyone else? I don't want to create a thing out of nothing, especially when he's been dealing with so many issues, but I'll have to admit that it all leaves me feeling strange. Part 2. My ex did something terrible because I wouldn't take her back and now I'm being blamed for everything. When I got home from work, I waited for her and right away confronted her to which she denied and called me a psycho for not believing her. She also said that I was a piece of shit for not trusting her until I showed her a picture that my friend sent me. Her face told me everything and that's when the waterworks started and I knew that I had made a huge mistake in taking her back so I ended it. She cried and begged me to think it over and not throw away everything that we have together which made me really angry and I'm not gonna lie, but I hit her. I wasn't proud, I'm still not, but saying shit like not to throw everything away when it was her who threw everything away pissed me off to the max. I told her to pack her shit and leave, called her parents and mine and told them everything. Her parents came to help her and I told them basically to F off after they told me to think it over and to make the right decision. 
decision before actually ending it. She begged me again not to end things, but I had to for my own peace of mind. I didn't hear from her or her parents until three days ago when my parents called me to let me know that my ex-fiance had unalived herself. Her parents found her and she had left a letter apologizing to everyone including my parents and me. She said she's sorry from the bottom of her heart for what she did to me and that she can't live without me and that's why she ended it. I'm at a fucking loss. My ex-fiance's friends and family are blaming me and my own mother told me that it was my fault. She told me that I should have forgiven her since I'm clearly worth committing blank over. I need some serious advice as I'm pretty much being cornered by basically everyone and I really don't know what else to do. Is this all really my fault? I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do about it. This story is wild, so hold on. My husband and I have been married for two years. We're best friends, so we've had a really good relationship. We got married after six months of meeting each other. During that whole time, I met a lot of his friends, including his best friend. But he told me he had another best friend who was going to be traveling for a full year. One day, my husband tells me that all his friends are getting together to greet their best friend, the one who had been traveling for a full year. We show up to the party. And it turns out that this best friend is a woman. Not just any woman, but one that looks like she could model for Vogue. This woman was so good looking, I instantly got insecure. When her and my husband saw each other, they ran to each other's arms. Then I spent the entire night trying to be included in the conversation. Every time I would ask a question, she would answer it to my husband. She would never even look me in the face. Finally, I asked her if she had a problem and she said, no, I'm sorry. I'm just really excited to see my best friend. When we got in the car, I told my husband I didn't like her. Then he said that he knew exactly what I was going to say. And he also said not to worry because I wouldn't ever have to hang out with her. And that he would hang out with her without me. Just to save me the trouble. Part two is up. I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do. That's when he told me that he would hang out with his girl best friend without me so that he could save me the trouble of having to see her face. Then I asked him if he thought that she was more attractive than me and that if he preferred to be with her than with me. He started to laugh and said no and he felt offended that I would even ask him. So basically he didn't even answer my question. Sometimes he would tell me that he would go hang out with her at bars. I would stay home and just literally cry the entire time. I would get sick to my stomach picturing my husband hanging out with this Vogue model. That's when I reached out to my husband's best friend and asked him what the deal was her was and this man spilled all the tea he told me that they had all been best friends since college and that the vogue model was basically in love with my husband the entire time they were in college but my husband never paid attention to her but then he told me that they ended up hooking up one night and that after that my husband was hooked but then she didn't want to be with him instead they decided to stay best friends i ran to the bathroom and vomited part three is up I cheated on my husband 14 times with his best friend and other guys and now I don't know what to do. After finding out that my husband had hooked up with his girl best friend who was really attractive, I vomited. Even though this was before I had met him, something told me that she was probably still in love with him. That's when my husband's guy best friend who had just told me everything invited me over to his house. And then the idea just came to me. I'm gonna start hooking up with whoever I want if my husband's gonna be doing it with his best friend. So I went over to this guy's house, we had a few drinks, and I hooked up with him. Did I regret it? Absolutely not. I felt liberated. It's like I had gotten revenge on my husband. So after that, I went on a rampage. I tried to hook up with as many of his friends as possible. Exactly six guys. Then I looked for the guys that I liked in college, and I hooked up with a bunch of them too. In total, 14. This all happened in a month. But now my husband told me that his best friend, the girl that I thought he was hooking up with, is pregnant from another guy and that they're getting married. And that the whole time she was away traveling for a year, she was with this man. Now I feel like a total asshole. What should I do? I'm ready to kick my younger sibling out. I'm 36 female and due to family situations, I live with my younger sibling 14 and B, female to non-binary. It's relevant. I like to think that I'm an accepting person who has tried super hard to accept my sibling moving to they them pronouns. I even contacted their school to change their name and their pronouns and insisted on my family doing the same. But lately, everything is an issue because of this. It's been eight months of absolute hell. They still have their longer hair and for the most part are female presenting. They wear crop tops and short skirts. Recent outfit they wore shorts with knee high socks and boots with nice pink shirt, hair and pigtails. A woman passing us said to her kid, move over and let the girls pass you. And my sibling flipped out, screaming about being misgendered and how annoying it was even though this woman wasn't being rude on purpose. It's constant little snide remarks about me being a boomer and being homophobic. You wouldn't get it. It's a Gen Z thing and we're more accepting than your generation. Of course you would say something like that. You can't just assume someone's pronouns. You have to use they them until they correct you. We can't watch Friends or How I Met Your Mother without them talking the whole way through about how this kind of behavior wouldn't be tolerated now. We can't read certain books, newspapers, use certain websites. It's annoying as fuck and I'm sick of it. I can't watch a film without a comment about, where's the representation for NB people? Any romantic films or TV shows gets a, oh look, another hetero couple because we don't see that enough. I can't recommend anything anymore. What about this dress for that event we have coming up? Absolutely not. Why would you recommend that? Because everyone will assume that I'm a girl and I'm not. So then why do you wear skirts? It's not up to you to dictate what I wear and you're being transphobic to me. 
I can't open my mouth without a correction or actually we don't say that anymore. So I'm done. Done with the eye rolls. Done with their friends saying, oh, that's so sad that she doesn't support you. Done with trying my best. I spoke to our aunt a few days ago and she said that they can move in with her. So I'm going to speak to them tonight. Things have to change pretty soon or they have to leave because I can't deal with it anymore. Am I wrong for wanting to kick them out? Story time about how my husband forced me to do the dirty with another man and filmed it. Disclaimer is not my story time. I said I mean Instagram. I told my husband to get rid of the video, but he doesn't want to. And now he's asking me to do it again with somebody else. Here's a little backstory. My husband and I have been married for four years. He's in the military, so he spends a lot of the time away from me. Now, sometimes I think this is a blessing, but it's also a curse. When he's away from me, he's really sweet. He sends me written hand letters saying how much he loves me and how much he misses me. But in the same breath, he'll turn around and accuse me of sleeping with somebody else because I didn't answer the phone while I was at the supermarket. He gets jealous at least once a week, and we always end up having a huge fight over the phone. But when he is home, he's completely hypersexual. He wants to do it all the time. And if I don't want to do it, he gets upset. He once told me that he should just have a girlfriend so that when I don't want to do it with him, he can have somebody else to do it with. And I know that you guys are going to say this is all toxic behavior, but I don't really try to correct his behavior. Because he's in the army, he thinks everything he does is right. And it's just easier for me to go along with it. Is that bad? Part two is up. Uh... Part two of how my husband forced me into doing the dirty with another man while he filmed it. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. And now that I'm asking him to delete it, he says he won't. Like I said in part one, he's in the army. So when he's home, he's super hypersexual. Always wants to have sex and if I don't want to, he gets really mad. The last time he went away, he started writing to me about his new fantasy. And guess what his fantasy was? He wants to watch me do it with another man. But as soon as he told me, I said absolutely not. First off, I don't want to do it with any other guy. And secondly, I don't want to do it in front of my husband. Remember how I said he gets jealous and we always fight about it? He said that this way I could do it with any guy that I want and he wouldn't get jealous. I kept saying no for a full two days. That's when he started calling me every single night telling me that if I loved him, I should just do it, and that so many other women would do anything to please their husbands. He even said that I should consider myself lucky that he would be willing to let me do it with somebody else. That's when he started sending me pictures of other men in the army, and he basically said, take your pick. But I kept saying no. Then he spent the next two weeks trying to convince me to do it. He wore me down so much that eventually I said yes. Part three is, a uh, part two of how my husband forced me into doing the dirty with another man while he filmed it. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. And now that I'm asking him to delete it, he says he won't. Like I said in part one, he's in the army. So when he's home, he's super hypersexual. Always wants to have sex, and if I don't want to, he gets really mad. The last time he went away, he started writing to me about his new fantasy. And guess what his fantasy was? He wants to watch me do it with another man. But as soon as he told me, I said absolutely not. First off, I don't want to do it with any other guy. And secondly, I don't want to do it in front of my husband. Remember how I said he gets jealous and we always fight about it? He said that this way I could do it with any guy that I want and he wouldn't get jealous. I kept saying no for a full two days. That's when he started calling me every single night, telling me that if I loved him, I should just do it, and that so many other women would do anything to please their husbands. He even said that I should consider myself lucky that he would be willing to let me do it with somebody else. That's when he started sending me pictures of other men in the army, and he basically said, take your pick. But I kept saying no. Then he spent the next two weeks trying to convince me to do it. He wore me down so much that eventually I said yes. Part three is a... Uh... Part two of how my husband forced me into doing the dirty with another man while he filmed it. Disclaimer is in my story time instead of me on Instagram. Like I said, my husband is in the army. When he goes away, he gets really jealous. But when he's with me, he always wants to do it. And he gets really mad if I don't want to. The last time that he went away, he started talking to me about his new fantasy. And guess what it was? He wants to see me do it with another man in front of him. But of course, I said no. I told him there was no way I wanted to do that. Especially in front of him, knowing how jealous he is. Then he explained to me that because it's his fantasy, he would not get jealous. And that I should consider myself lucky. That's when he started sending me pictures of guys in the army and he basically told me to take my pick meaning that i could choose whatever i guy i wanted to but obviously i kept saying no i now recognize that what he was doing was completely wrong though because he started coercing me he started saying things like if you love me you'll do it and that most women would do anything for their husbands and i almost forgot he said i should feel lucky that he's still attracted to me yeah he would call me every single night and we would fight about it he would tell me to do it and i would just keep saying no that's when he started saying that i didn't love him part three is up Part three of how my husband forced me into doing it with another man while he filmed it. Disclaimer is not my story time is on my Instagram. I finally gave in and said yes to doing it with another guy. I had literal knots in my stomach knowing that I was going to have to do it. But I justified it because a lot of women do things that they normally wouldn't do for their husbands. So why shouldn't I? My husband finally came home from the army. Two days later, he scheduled the meeting with the other guy. The guy that I chose from the pictures was actually really handsome. So the doing it part wasn't that hard. It was having my husband in the same room watching that was really hard. Then I noticed that my husband took out a camera. He was full on filming. I told him to turn that off and he said no. So after the guy left, I told my husband to delete the video but he says he wants to keep it for when he goes away to the army everyone has their kinks but this made me really uncomfortable i actually feel like i can't trust that he won't show it to anybody imagine if he shows it to his army buddies now he's asking me to do it with another guy what the heck should i do
My husband left for South Africa four years ago. Things were not really working for him in our country. He was hoping to get a good job there, make some good money and come back. Our son was two years when he left. At that time, I was working as a nanny for a woman in the next town. Our rent was due and we didn't even have enough money to renew the rent. She agreed to let my son and I stay with her whilst I look after her son. Her son was just a year old at the time. I moved in with her a week after my husband left. I spoke to my husband every evening via video chat for a year. So I stopped hearing from him. I knew he had gotten a job as a carpenter, but I didn't know where exactly. I got very worried because it was not like him to cut communication like that. I tried getting in touch with him several times, but it was all to no avail. The only thing I could do was to pray that he was okay. Now, the woman I was working for was very hospitable. She treated me very well. We became very good friends in no time. Since our kids were almost the same age, they also became best friends in no time. She knew I was worried about my husband and she always consoled me. She always told me not to worry and that everything would be okay. Everything changed my second year with her. Her husband had impregnated a teenager and had left the house to go stay with a pregnant girl. This changed my madam and she was always moody. And I didn't blame her because I don't know what I would do in that situation. After the girl gave birth, her husband divorced her. My madam got very depressed and hardly ate anything. But gradually, she started to feel better and things were going back to the way it used to be. And she always told me never to trust any man. She said she would never fall in love again and that her family is enough for her. She told me my son and I were like a family to her and she didn't want to lose us too. I assured her I will always be there for her. Around this time, I've stayed with her for three years. And all this time, I had still not heard from my husband. Soon after this, my madam started telling me to forget about him. Since he might have gotten a new woman over there, and might have even forgotten all about me and my son. But I just couldn't think that way. I knew my husband. And I knew he would never abandon my son and I like that. After staying with them for four years, I went to the supermarket to buy some things. And I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw my husband standing at the back of the shop. Our eyes met at the same time. And he opened his mouth in shock. He ran towards me and hugged me. I couldn't believe the story he told me. He said things didn't go very well for him in South Africa. He lost everything and was homeless for a while. He said he felt ashamed to tell me about what was going on and he didn't want me to worry. So he intentionally cut contact with me for some time till he got back on his feet. And in my opinion, this was a very stupid thing for him to do. He said he finally got a job, called me and couldn't reach me. He couldn't take it anymore because he thought something might have happened to me and my son. So he came back to the country and went straight to the place I was working. And this was last year. He met my madam in the house and she told him I was no longer staying with her. She told him I had fallen in love with another man and had moved away with him. He wanted my new address but she said she didn't have it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Like why would she do that? We both went back to the house together and she broke down into crocodile tears when she saw us. She said she was just trying to protect me because all men are scum. Because her marriage didn't work and she was not happy. She didn't want me to be happy obviously. I was so disappointed in her and I don't think I can ever forgive her. She's still begging me to work for her and her son is like a son to me but can i really continue working for someone like this my husband is still not okay financially and she pays me well she has even promised to double my pay but is it really worth it to work for someone like her this follower needs your advice babes please drop some below story time on how my fiance got me pregnant then left me and married a man part two okay so boom like i said he was delivered hallelujah and no longer gay a straight man walking with god he proposed and I got pregnant and we were set to be married in love. Or so I thought. Things took me by storm and one day I woke up and my fiance left me. And not only did he leave me, but he left me pregnant for a man. And married that man the same day our wedding was set for. I'm heartbroken, but I gotta be strong for my baby. Be careful out there. Story time about how my fiance got me pregnant, then left me and married a man. Okay, so boom, a lot was said in that title alone. So it all started when I commented on an Instagram post of a handsome man. This handsome man then followed me and slid into my DMs. You are so beautiful. Call me. Things went on from there and he eventually asked me to move in. So... I did. We quickly got to know each other and I fell in love. I then learned of his testimony. He was a gay man who went to church and was delivered. Hallelujah. He was no longer gay and now was a straight man walking with God. I believed him and believed that this was his new truth. So I went on with our relationship. I got pregnant and then he proposed and we were set to get married in love. Or so I thought. Things took me by storm when one day I woke up and my fiance left me for a man. Like for part two.
for screenshotting messages guys sent me and sending them to their mothers. I'm an 18 year old girl who is in college at the moment and I've been getting bullied and harassed by three guys in my class. They are messaging me online with gross harassing messages and nude pictures that I'm sure you can all fill in the gaps without me going into detail. I should have reported them or just blocked them but I had enough so i screenshotted every message they sent me and i found their mothers through their facebook pages and sent screenshots to them including an explanation of who i am and how their sons have been bothering me their mothers were horrified and shocked by what i sent them explaining what was going on and all three of them were on my side some of my friends think this is genius and exactly what they deserve but some of my other friends think i took it too far and that it was out of line to put their mothers in to it and that i also don't know what their home life is like am i the asshole for doing i'm going to be telling you the scary story of the house i lived in in elementary and middle school it was a three-bedroom house one bedroom in the basement and two bedrooms upstairs because i was the oldest i got put in the bedroom in the basement right when we moved in i already had creepy feelings about the house i hated being downstairs by myself one day i dropped a 20 dollars bill behind my dresser I decided to move my dresser all by myself and behind the dresser was this door. It wasn't a normal door, it was really short and just squared. It was also glued off so I couldn't get into it. Me and my neighbor who were best friends worked at it for days to get into it. We finally got it open and inside was another room. It was almost like an underground attic. The walls were wooden, the ceiling was wooden, there was no carpet, but it smelt awful. My parents found out and they were super mad at me for opening the room. They of course put that dresser in front of that door for a reason because they knew I would explore it. But after that, things started to get weird. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of my scary childhood story about the door behind my dresser. Of course, my parents were really mad at us for opening it up, so they sealed it back up. They just didn't want us to get hurt from all the rusty nails or if there was mold inside. But I think we released something when we opened that door and a lot of things started to happen. First, I started having night terrors to the point where I would scream at the top of my lungs and not wake up. My parents would have to come downstairs and wake me up and put me back to bed. Then, every single night I would have this reoccurring dream that me, my mom, and my brother were all at a picnic at the beach. This super old lady would walk up to us and she would take me. She then would lock me up in the room behind my dresser. This dream would reoccur every single night for months. It scared me so much that I started to not sleep at night. I developed insomnia and would only sleep for two to three hours per night at only eight years old. There was a couple nights where I swear I saw the old lady standing in the corner of my room. My parents just thought I was hallucinating from no sleep though. Stay tuned for part three. This is part three of my scary childhood story about the door behind my dresser. Because I wasn't sleeping and developed insomnia, my parents took me to a sleep therapist. The only thing the therapist gave me was a bunch of sleeping pills. Even though the sleeping pills worked, it made my dreams so much worse. I even started walking in my sleep. I would wake up all the time not in my bed. My covers would be all the way across the room like someone had dragged them over there. One night, one of my best friends slept over and we heard knocking coming from the door behind my dresser. That night when we went to bed, she started speaking really creepy gibberish in her sleep. I had to go get my mom to wake her up. I woke up a couple nights feeling like I was suffocating and when I swung out of bed, I saw a silhouette of an old lady. My cat even started to sit there and meow and hiss at random things in the corners of the room. But there was nothing ever there. It got so bad to the point where I moved up into my brother's room. If any of you have listened to all three parts and are experts on spirits, please message me on Instagram and tell me what you think I released that night when I opened the door. Am I the asshole for cutting someone off financially because they were acting entitled? I, 25 female, have an average paying job, doing body piercings, so I earn enough to live off. My friend Lottie, 24 female, who I had been friends with since I was little, did not come from a financially fortunate family and has no job. For extra info, no disabilities, mental disorders, or anything at all to stop her working. And she has a public transport pass. So ever since I got a job at 16 years old, 